again, I also apologize for losing the file before doing this, but um, the, the triangulation exercise where we're moving in a dynamic way up and down. Uh, this is our quizzy for today. Uh, first off, I'm going to very quickly just create my uh, surface. So I'll reference the curve in and then translate it to a surface. It's just a plain, plain old surface. Um, you guys could have created the surface already in Rhino. That's fine. You could have used a rectangular grid if you wanted to or a square grid. It just depends on a few different ways. Uh, I didn't give you any other three-dimensional or warped surface parameters, so a rectangular grid would have been fine. So the subdivision you're looking for is under math domain and divide domain squared. And we've done this a whole bunch of times now. If you're trying to subdivide a surface, you're going to go to surface utility and um, isotrim. And this is that trinity I was telling you about. Big triangle, just goes like that. And then you put in your sliders for how many subdivisions you want. Just looks like that, okay? So you've already seen this at least 10 times in this class. Yeah. So you're all masters of this. Yeah. So now um, what we've got to do is triangulate it. And that is the new part. That's the part that I think at first most of us were struggling with here today. Um, first, in order to um, create a triangle, we need points. And in order to find the points, we have to deconstruct the surfaces. So I'm going to deconstruct BREP from surface analysis. That gets me my uh, vertices. So these come in packs of four. We haven't talked about this specifically in this list format yet. We'll get into that when it becomes really, really, really important. But each one of those packs of four is a different panel. So we can use that um, using list item to grab particular corners. And you already saw that last week um, under set list and list item we can um, basically create a separate list item panel for each index that has a point. So that would be, um, let me plug my vertices in first. Um, you're going to have a zero, because remember, all lists in Grasshopper start from zero. And you'll make four of these. So a zero, a one, two, and a three. Anybody lost so far? Sort of, kind of? All right. Well, this part's kind of new, so I'll start to slow it down a little. Um, so we have all of these vertices. We just need to create surfaces off of it. So without going into all of the, the display points and everything like that that we did before, I'm very quickly going to just drop in our surface four point. And I'm going to make my first one index. Um, I'm just going to say 0, 1, and 2. So those are the ones that it created. It's getting a little crazy here, so I'm going to turn all these off. And now all I have is this on. OK. Now um, I need the other one, so I'm going to copy and paste that. And rather than worrying about uh, you know, figuring out which point there is, I know that I only really need to figure out one other point. So I'm just going to kind of trial and error my way through it. I'm going to say, if I re replace um, index 3 into C, what do I get? And that's not right. So I'll go back. And um, what if I do index 3 into index B? And that's what I get. So that is what I want. So I'm going to keep that. It's better than having to pull out the point list and everything every single time. When it's this simple, eventually you'll figure out how to just do it right off the, right off the bat like that. So. Um, so we have these surfaces, right? I mentioned at this point, I gave you the hint that says the, the key component that I think is best for this use is move, right? Because we're going to move them just in a particular direction relative to the surface itself. In this case, it happens to be in the xy plane. That's all you have to do is the xy plane. So we can use unit z. OK, so um, the move command is under transform, Euclidean, and move. And then um, under vector and vector, we have unit Z. That's going to tell me which way I'm going to move it. 
So if I take one set of surfaces, let's say this set, I'm going to plug that in here, and then I plug my unit Z in, this is what I get. Or if you've built a much smaller model, yours is going to look a little bit more like this. It might look like that, right? All of the triangles that you created in that set are going to be moved the same value vertically. Pretty much all of us wound up there, right, at some point. So the, the final clue that I gave you, and this is where I'm going to slow it down a little bit because it's, it's one of the newer ones, although you've seen it a few times in a few different ways. Right, I said um, repeat data and jitter, but I didn't quite give you the third, and there is a third, um, of course. Uh, so I'm going to move, move over. And I'm going to drop in those components and start to work backwards. Okay, the um, did you crash? <laughs> All right, what was I doing again? Um, right. Okay, repeat data and jitter. So um, repeat data is under set and sequence, and then we have uh, jitter. So what are these doing? Right. Um, repeat data is going to take a certain set of numbers and it's going to recycle it a certain number of times in order to give me values that uh, I can use on that particular set of magnitude values for my extrusion. Okay, So um, jitter is just going to help to make it a little bit more dynamic. It's going to shake up that batch of numbers. So um, in order to repeat data, I need to create data for it to repeat. And I'm going to do that using range. So set, sequence, and range. Now this is getting a little heavy in this section, but um, range now also needs certain information in order to create a range of numbers. It needs a domain, a boundary within which to create a certain set of numbers, and then the amount of numbers that it's going to create. That, you know, depending on how you do this, you may or may not actually need repeat data. It's, it's really up to you. Um, but I, I just kind of chose to do it because my range, the way I did it, I did a domain and I did construct domain. That's this one right here. And I put a param on there, a panel, uh, and I just did... Um, Oh, no, I'm sorry, I did sliders. That's right. I did a slider from negative 2 to 5. You can do sliders from whatever values you want. I just wanted something that was going to go a little bit down, a little bit up. So negative 2 up top, and I'm going to do 5 down below. And then that gets plugged into the data input, or the domain input, sorry, um, for range. Now, um, n is the number of steps that it generates, which means uh, it is the number of spaces in between values that it generates. So if you plug in a value of, say, 10, you're actually going to get 11 numbers. Uh, that part takes getting used to. But um, I'm just going to leave it at the default for now, I think, and maybe play with it later. But that becomes my data, right? So I have a negative 2, and it goes all the way up to a 5.0 says it down there. It's, I know it's hard for you to see, but anyway, that range gets plugged into D, which needs to be repeated a certain number of times. That certain number of times is going to be read from how many triangles I'm trying to modify. So that's under set, list, list length, and surface will plug into that. But notice how um, each of these says n equals 1. Well, if, it's, if it looks like this, there may be 30, 30 values in this list, but all 30 values is pumping out a, a return of a number 1. So we need to flatten that list so that it reads all 30 items and gives me a correct value of 30. I know I might be losing some of you here. That's, we're moving pretty quick. But we're almost there, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through the rest of my thought how I 
worked backwards, and now I'm going to work forward to complete the idea, and then I'll, I'll recap, okay? So a uh, list length gets plugged into the length input of the repeat data. So it'll recycle that list of 11 numbers up to, uh, up to the 30th index, and then that becomes my, my set of values. That's it right there. So moving forward now, I can shake that up using jitter if I choose, and that's just something I chose to do, but plug the, the, DM, the data output into the list input, um, and then we can put a slider on for the jitter. So I'll just do 0 to 1.0. I'll slow this. I'll slow this down for you guys. Don't get don't get upset. <laughs> I know I'm moving super fast, but anyway, that goes into uh, jitter, and that's a, a shuffle strength. Um, yeah. So you can change that value. You're not going to see a difference yet until you plug it in. So let's plug it in. The v value is going to go in there. Um, oh yeah. See <laughs> see how it stacked them all up like that? That's because. Um, the surfaces are grafted, and so all 30 of those jitter values are happening to each surface. So really, this whole thing just needs to be flattened in the beginning. So let me finish the thought, show you what it's doing, um, and then turn that one on. And then I'll recap. Okay, so this is what I got. These are my new surfaces, and if I change the low value from negative 2, I can kind of move it up move it down. I can change the high value down. Everything like that. Okay? We did it. So that took about 10 minutes. Maybe a little more. Okay? So let me, um, I'm going to stop the video just to keep it concise in, in that format. And then I'll walk through really slowly all of the, you know, challenges with this.